What is going on, wonderful people? It's Medicosis Perfectionellus, where medicine makes perfect sense. Welcome back to my cardiovascular physiology playlist. In previous videos, we talked about the baroreceptor reflex, where hypotension causes reflex tachycardia, whereas hypertension causes reflex bradycardia. Today, we'll talk about mechanoreceptors that you find in the heart and in the lungs such as the case in the Bain bridge reflex, which is the topic of today's video. And in the next video, we shall talk about the bezeled Jerish reflex. Click the like button, click the subscribe button before my heart starts beating fast. This video is part of my physiology playlist. It's also part of my cardiology playlist, which is very dear to my heart, no pun intended. I like to start with the big picture. You have all kinds of receptors throughout the body, bare receptors that feel pressure, chemoreceptors that sense chemicals, cardiopulmonary receptors in the heart and the lungs, as well as pain and temperature receptors. We call them nociceptors and thermoreceptors, respectively. All of these receptors send different impulses to the central nervous system via afferent input. The central nervous system processes these sensations and then sends responses, efferent outputs to effector organs in the cardiovascular system in the heart and the vessels. To achieve what exactly? To control the blood pressure in the arteries, to control the pressure in the cardiac chambers, and to control the pressure in large veins. And that's why you need these receptors and these reflexes in order to achieve homeostasis. You can learn about all of these reflexes in a video titled Control of Circulation, which you can find in my cardiology playlist, in my physiology playlist, and in my cardiac physiology playlist. Let's start at the beginning. Remember that you have 12 pairs of cranial nerves. 1 and 2 come from the forebrain, cranial nerves 3 and 4 from the midbrain, 5, 6, 7, 8 leave the pons, whereas 9, 10, 11, 12 leave the medulla. The aortic arch has baroreceptors, whereas the aortic body has chemoreceptors, peripheral chemoreceptors that is. Similarly, the carotid sinus has baroreceptors, whereas the carotid body has chemoreceptors. How do I remember which is which? Easy. The sinus is always wider than the body. The body is just tiny. The sinus is big. Big means larger area, and area is related to pressure. So the one that has the bigger area is the one that measures pressure. The sinus is barrow, whereas the body is chemo. When it comes to the baroreceptor reflex, we have two heroes, the glossopharyngeal nerve and the vagus nerve, cranial nerves 9 and 10 respectively. Do you see this? This is the vagus nerve. Why do we call it vagus? Because it's vague, because the wandering nerve, it keeps wandering all over the body. And in the beginning, we did not know what function it serves. So we called it the wanderer, the vagus. It's a nerve that is dear to my heart, pun intended again. The vagus nerve is part of the parasympathetic autonomic nervous system, so it lowers the heart rate. The vagus nerve plays a role in the baroreceptor reflex together with the glossopharyngeal. It also plays a role in the bain bridge reflex, which is the topic of today's video. The vagus also plays a role in the basal gerish reflex, which is the topic of the next video. If you wish to see more videos like this in the future, please drop a heart emoji in the comments. So let's talk about the origin of the vagus nerve from the brain stem, particularly the medulla oblongata. The vagus nerve had many nuclei as well, including the trigeminal sensory nucleus, the solitary nucleus yet again, the dorsal motor nucleus of the vagus nerve, and the nucleus ambigus. Which one of these controls the baroreceptors and the chemoreceptors in the aortic arch? The answer is the solitary nucleus. If you wish to learn more details about the vagus nerve, and all its nuclei and all its functions, please refer to my neuroanatomy playlist. I have a complete video on the vagus nerve, in which I've told you the famous story about the patient who had chronic cough for 30 plus years, and no doctor could figure out why, until one doctor 
did an honest physical exam and found that the chronic cough was caused by an irritation to the vagus nerve in a certain part of the body. Once that irritation was treated, the cough disappeared. How was it irritated for that long? Watch my video on the vagus nerve to know the answer. If you wish to download these doozy colorful notes, go to medicosisperfectionatis.com. I help you learn, understand, and pass exams. If you want me to personally tutor you, reach out to me on my website. I've talked about the Bay receptor reflex in a separate video in this cardiac physiology playlist. Let's talk about the Bay receptor reflex. Suppose that I started with hypotension for one reason or another. The beta receptors will feel it. These beta receptors are located in the carotid sinus, glossopharyngeal, and aortic arch, vagus. They send afferent fibers to the brain, telling the brain, hey brain, help us, help us, danger, danger. We have hypotension. The brain gets really mad and sends sympathetic efferent fibers. Fight, flight, baby. The sympathetic does many things. It raises the heart rate, it increases contractility, which increases the stroke volume, and it constricts the arteries and the veins. All of this is going to raise the blood pressure and back to normal. Conversely, if you start with hypertension, the opposite is going to happen. The bare receptors in the carotid sinus and the aortic arch are gonna feel the hypertension. There is too much pressure on those receptors, so they fire more. But when there was hypotension, they fired less. Which means the greater the pressure, the greater the firing, as you see. And this will be the idea behind a famous graph that we'll talk about shortly. Bare receptors send afferent fibers to the brain. Dear brain, help us, we have hypertension. The brain will calm things down by sending the parasympathetic efferent rest and digest this vagus nerve is going to do what calm down everything decrease heart rate maybe decreases contractility and decrease vasoconstriction which means we'll achieve vasodilation all of these factors tend to decrease the blood pressure and back to normal be careful when the brain sends sympathetic efferents, it means that the brain was really upset, really mad, really triggered. So this is increased firing rate of the vasomotor center in the brainstem. But when the brain wants to calm things down, it means that we have decreased firing rate of the vasomotor center. Please pay attention and understand the distinction between the stimulus and the response. The stimulus is decreased firing rate of the bare receptors and the response response is increased firing rate of the vasomotor center. When the stimulus was increased firing rate of the bare receptor, the response was decreased firing rate of the vasomotor center. The bare receptor reflex, just like any reflex, has the following components. Stimulus, response, afferent, center, efferent, effector organ, response, forming the acronym SARASIR, which is Arabic for cockroaches. For the bare receptor reflex, what's the stimulus? The stimulus is decreased blood pressure or increased blood pressure. Decreased blood pressure will cause less stretch in the bare receptors, meaning less stretch in the aortic arch and the carotid sinus. Hypertension causes more stretch. Name the receptor, bare receptors in the aortic arch and carotid sinus. The afferent for the carotid sinus is the glossopharyngeal nerve, for the aortic arch is the vagus nerve. These afferent fibers end up in the nucleus tractus solitarius in the brainstem. Where is the center? The center is in the brain. Which part of the brain? The brainstem, such as the ventrolateral nucleus of the medulla and the dorsal motor nucleus of the vagus nerve. The efferent is sympathetic or parasympathetic. The sympathetic starts thoracolumbar, of course, mainly thoracic because we're reaching the heart. Parasympathetic starts from the nucleus of the vagus nerve. Effector organ, SA node and AV node. If we start with hypotension, we will speed them up. But if we start with hypertension, we will slow them down. Also, the afferents are going to reach the smooth muscles of the vessel wall. If I start with hypotension, I will cause vasoconstriction in response. But if I start with hypertension, the response would be vasodilation. Remember, when we started with hypotension, the bare receptors fired less. But when we had hypertension, the bare receptors fired more. So the graph is going to look like this. What does that mean? It means that when you have low blood pressure, you will have low firing level in the bare receptors. But if you start with hypertension, you will have higher firing rate in your bare receptors. The graph looks like this, but we have two graphs. 
one for the constant pressure and one for the pulsatile pressure. If you have watched my endocrine physiology videos, you would recall that a pulsatile stimulus gives you a greater response compared to a continuous or constant stimulus. The same story holds true here. Pulsatile pressure has a higher slope compared to the constant pressure. So at a certain mean arterial pressure, if I start with this point right here and you go up, 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 of course you will intersect with the pulsatile pressure at a higher level. We are done with the bare receptor reflex. If you want me to make a separate video on the chemoreceptors, please let me know in the comments. Then we'll turn our attention to the cardiopulmonary receptors, such as the bain Bridge reflex and the basal gyrus reflex. Starting with the Bain bridge reflex, what is going on? Well, 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 you start with high blood volume for whatever reason. Maybe your doctor was stupid and gave you too much normal saline or salt solutions. This increase in blood volume will increase the input to the heart, which is called venous return, otherwise known as right ventricular end diastolic volume. This, of course, increases the central venous pressure, which is a fancy way of saying the pressure in the right atrium, because the right atrium is kind of the central vein. Why? Because it receives veins from all over the body. It receives the superior vena cava from upstairs, it receives the inferior vena cava from downstairs, and it even receives the coronary sinus from the heart itself. So the right atrium is the central vein, so to speak. And when this happens, you know what's gonna take place? We will stretch the atrium more. And when the atrium gets stretched more, guess what's gonna happen? We're gonna send afferent fibers through the vagus, because remember the vagus reaches the heart, and these afferent fibers will go up up, up to the central nervous system. Which part of the central nervous system? Since this is cranial nerve number 10, therefore it has to be in the medulla because cranial nerves at 9, 10, 11, and 12 are connected to the medulla. Which part of the medulla, you might ask? It's the nucleus tractus solitarius yet again. And then what's the response? Well, if you have lots and lots of blood volume, you risk developing hypertension. So why not we try to lower the blood pressure instead? That's a great response. So we vasodilate in order to lower the blood pressure. Because when you vasodilate, you're going to increase the radius, but decrease the resistance. And when you decrease the total peripheral resistance, you are going to decrease the mean systemic arterial blood pressure. Since we are being overwhelmed by tons of blood volume, we better beat faster in order to cope with this increased demand. Next, if we are receiving lots and lots and lots of blood volume, why not get rid of that volume by increasing natriuresis? So anything that improves the excretion of sodium and water in the kidney, such as ANP, atrial natriuretic peptide, should be boosted. And anything that wants to retain the water, such as antidiuretic hormone, should be suppressed. And this is how you bring your blood volume down and back to normal. That's the beauty of the Bain Bridge reflex. Where do you find these receptors? They are in the atria and they are in the big veins, such as the pulmonary veins. And that's it for the Bain Bridge reflex. Watch the following video for the Jerish Bezel reflex. The next reflex is the Bezel Jerish reflex. What is the stimulus? hypotension or anesthesia or ischemia, which decreases the perfusion, or serotonin and other chemicals, including many chemicals released during ischemia. What's going to happen? What's going to happen is there will be less pressure on the cardiac mechanoreceptors, mostly in the left ventricle. They will send afferent fibers, which are unmyelinated C fibers that are part of the vagus nerve. And because we're part of the vagus nerve, the center has to be in the middle oblongata, particularly in the nucleus tractus solitarius yet again. I want you to think of the basal gyrus reflex as the opposite to the bare receptor reflex. So for the bare receptor reflex, what was the response to the hypotension? The response to the hypotension was tachycardia and vasoconstriction. But here we'll see the exact opposite. The response to the hypotension will be bradycardia and vasodilation. Bradycardia lowers the cardiac output and lowers the blood pressure. The vasodilation lowers the total peripheral resistance and lowers the blood pressure. Also, since we have pulmonary receptors, they tend to decrease the respiratory rate. Why do we need the basal gyrus reflex? Because if you leave it to the bare receptor reflex alone, the response to the hypotension 
might be an exaggerated hypertension. To protect from this overreaction in the other direction, we better lower the blood pressure just a tiny bit, just to be safe. Better safe than sorry, said the basal gyrus reflex. If you want to learn about all of these receptors and all of these reflexes, watch my video titled Control of Circulation in my physiology playlist. And to learn about the antiarrhythmics, antihypertensives, antihyperlipidemics, antianginal medications, diuretics, and digoxin, download my cardiac pharmacology course at medicosisperfectionalis.com. It comes with videos, notes, and cases. Here is a quiz for you. During pregnancy, Pregnancy. What's going to happen to the stroke volume, heart rate, cardiac output, total birth resistance, systolic pressure, diastolic pressure, central venous pressure, femoral venous pressure? Do we have any murmurs during normal pregnancy? What's going to happen to the red blood cell mass? How about the plasma volume? How about the hematocrit value? And how about the oxygen carrying capacity of the blood? If you know the answer to these questions, please pause the video and comment below. Please download my obstetrics and gynecology high yields course at Medicosis Perfectionalis com it comes with videos notes and cases if you want to learn about angina myocardial infarction tias strokes cardiac arrhythmias acute limb ischemias acute respiratory distress syndrome drowning and the toxidromes download my emergency medicine high yields course at medicosisperfectionalis.com if you value what i do help me make more videos by supporting the channel go to buymeacoffee.com slash medicosis there are more than 750 premium videos available on this channel when you click the join button and choose the highest tier please subscribe hit the bell smash like support my channel on patreon paypal or venmo go to my website to download my courses notes and cases or if you would like me to personally tutor you be safe stay happy study hard this is medicosis perfect channels where medicine chemistry math and physics make perfect sense